Hey, what's up you guys? Today I'm going to be continuing my 2016 wrap up with books 11 through 15. The 11th book that I read this year is going to be Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This is a comedic memoir about very heavy topics like depression and anxiety, both of which Jenny suffers from. She also has a bunch of other conditions, diseases, I'm not sure, that have weird names and also affect her life and are also touched on in this book. If you guys don't know, Jenny is called The Bloggist and is a blogger online. She talks about different things that happen in her life and I, apparently she's really big but I'd never heard of her before this book. This is her second memoir and the first one is called Let's Pretend This Didn't Happen and I think that one has to do a little bit more with her blogging and her success from being a blogger and stuff like that and I think this one deals with more of her personal issues with depression and anxiety and how she deals with those things and how she just you know overcomes those difficulties that she has in her daily life. It says on the cover a hysterically ridiculous book about crippling depression and anxiety. That sounds like a terrible idea. And the book totally delivers on those things. It is very heavy but also ridiculous at the same time. Jenny has such a weird quirky personality that I really enjoyed but I don't think that everyone would really enjoy it. There were some parts that I was just kind of like what is even happening right now? It was just kind of really out there. But most of the time, I was totally down with what she was saying, and I thought it was super fun, super funny. It was very uplifting, and it, it was very kind of, the message was like, we're all in this together kind of thing. Like, there are people out there that are exactly like you, that are suffering the same way that you are suffering, and you guys can relate about it, I guess, is like kind of what the main message is in this book. I ended up giving this book four stars out of five stars. I really, really did enjoy it, but it wasn't like a five star book for me. It didn't really like impact me really hard as, as much as I thought it was going to, but I did really enjoy it. And I think that a lot of people would get a lot of things out of this book and especially people that have depression or anxiety would definitely be able to relate to a lot of the things that she's talking about. And I think that some of the messages that she has for people that suffer from depression and anxiety are very important. And one of the main things is being furiously happy. So I don't want to talk about her life too much though, because I feel like that's kind of like the whole point of the book is to figure out what's happening with her life and everything. But I really did enjoy it. I recommend this one. The next book that I read was the second book in the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch, and that is Red Seas Under Red Skies. I buddy read this book with Whitney from Accio Books, so I'll leave a link down in the description to her channel, and you can check her out. This book takes the whole story to a different setting. So they're in a new city, and they're doing a new mission kind of thing, and I just love these characters so much. The writing is, like, so good. Like, I really, really enjoy the writing. It's very absorbing. Whenever I'm reading it, I really just get super involved in it, and I really like reading these books. I really like his writing style. I think the characters are super funny. They have a lot of banter that they go back and forth about. I thought that this one was a little bit darker than the first one. This one was kind of more angsty, if that makes sense. And so at some parts I was just kind of like, come on, let's go. Let's, you know, do something already. This one also has a lot to do with sailing and ships and stuff like that. So if you don't know a lot of nautical terms, some of those are described in here. And so there's a lot of sailing terminology. So I feel like that is kind of where people kind of don't like this book maybe as much as the first one is because there are a lot of terms that have to do with sailing and ships and everything like that. I liked this book a lot. I ended up giving it four stars out of five stars. I didn't like it as much as the first one though. I thought the first one was like so fantastic. I gave that one 4.5 stars. So because I didn't like this one as much, I couldn't give it 4.5 stars or five stars. I ended up giving it four stars, but I do really recommend this series. It is one of the greatest. I think people that really like heist stories would really like these books it's so you have so many questions and you have no idea how things are going to work out and then everything starts to come together and you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh so if you like like six of crows or you like mistborn i think you would really like this series as well the next book i picked up was the second book in the blackwell pages series by kl armstrong and m.a mar and that is odin's ravens this is a norse middle grade series that i have really been enjoying i think i gave the first book 4.5 stars and i really really enjoyed that book. It has a lot of good messages and I think that the characters all represent things that are very important for middle grade readers to like experience and to figure out and to learn. This book picks off right where the first book left off and so you just go straight back into the story and it is very exciting, very enthralling, very adventure, funny. It definitely reminds me of the Percy Jackson books. I mean, just be not just because of the mythology, but the way that it's written. It has a lot of like short little one-liners that characters say to one another when they're really annoyed. And I thought those were really funny. It also has some curves. I wouldn't say twists, but it has some curves that you can kind of see coming 
at certain points, but you wouldn't have seen them coming like in the first book or anything like that. So it's definitely fun to see the story kind of curve and go different directions than you would think that it would have gone a while ago. It's got a lot of heavy foreshadowing, so you kind of predict the things that are going to be happening, but it's made for middle grade readers, so you know, that's okay. I really did enjoy this book. I gave it four stars out of five stars. I think I didn't like it as much because of two different things. One is that the one of the main characters, his name is Finn, he is the descendant of Loki. He is very frustrating in this book. In the first book, he starts to develop and change and to grow as a character, and then this book, he kind of takes three steps back when he took two steps forward in the first book, and he's so annoying, and he's so possessive over his cousin. It is, like, kind of weird, to be honest. It, it like, kind of seems like he has a super big crush on his cousin and he doesn't want anyone else to be around her. I mean, I know that's not the case. It's really just he's insecure and he's kind of clinging on to the people that he trusts, but it got a little bit ridiculous and I was not having it. And the second thing that I didn't really like about this book was that it makes parents and adults in general seem like the worst things in the world. All the parents and all of the grown-ups are like awful. And you no, know, children that are reading this book, like trust your parents. <laughs> they are, you know, looking out for you, stuff like that. Like there are people that you you can trust grown-ups that you can trust so it just seemed like every single adult in this book was not a good person so I didn't really like that either but overall I think that the story still has a lot of really good messages kind of the same ones that I talked about in my review of the first book so I'll leave a link to that in the card symbol and you can check it out but I do really like this series and I'm definitely excited to continue on and finish it up in the third book the series is also illustrated I don't think I've ever said that before but it is illustrated it kind of has like an anime feel to the pictures but I really like them I think that they are add a lot to the story so Yay. The 14th book I read in 2016 is going to be The Stories of the Raxura Volume 1 by Martha Wells. These are companion novellas and short stories to the original Books of Raxura trilogy, which I absolutely loved. It was so much fun. I gave the last book 5 out of 5 stars. It was incredible. I loved the way that the series ended, and I really wanted to see kind of where the characters may have ended up or answer some questions that I had when I was reading the series, and these definitely delivered. You get some questions answered about a character named Chime, who is kind of like a weird case in the Raxora world. Like, no one else is kind of like Chime, and I really wanted to know more about him, and you get a little short story about that. There's also a novella that happens after the end of the third book, so don't read these stories until after you finished the original trilogy. There's also a novella about the founding of the main court that you follow, which is called Indigo Cloud, and it was amazing. Wow, novella was so good. I would have given that novella alone five stars. Overall, I ended up giving all of these 4.5 stars, so like the whole bind up was a 4.5 stars for me, but I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm super excited to get to the second volume of stories. And the 15th book I read this year was a reread. I reread Sea of Monsters because my brother started reading it, so I wanted to read along with him and be able to discuss different things about the book with him. I ended up giving this book five stars out of five stars. I love Percy Jackson. It has so much nostalgia for me. I started reading it when I was like 15 or something, like right when the books started coming out. I don't know how old I was. I think I was 14 or something like that, 13 when the first book came out. So I've been reading them since they started coming out, and it has been so much fun going back and rereading the first couple. I just love the characters so much, and I think this book has a lot of good messages, like all middle grade books pretty much. This one deals a lot with friendship and loyalty and, you know, not judging a book by its cover, which I know we all do, but like in terms of people, in terms of like people maybe being autistic or people, you know, looking a lot different than you, Percy has a hard time not judging people like that and throughout the book he kind of learns to not do that. Like, he learns his lesson and all the other characters learn as well and they all start to accept, you know, differences in people and I think that that's really important for middle grade and just, you know, people in general to realize is that you need to accept people for who they are and you, you shouldn't be ashamed of being friends with someone just because they have one eye instead of two, you know? If you've read this series, you know what I'm talking about. I just think that this series is amazing and I loved rereading it. Also, I've been seeing people read some middle grade more, which I love, but whenever they review middle grade books, they're like, oh, well, it just seemed like it was for a younger audience. <laughs> you know, it's kind of the whole point. The books are supposed to be for people that are younger and for people that are starting to get into reading and everything like that. So I think that a book seeming like it's for a younger audience, if it's middle grade, is perfect. So I loved it. 
and I will continue my reread at some point. I'm gonna reread all of Rick Riordan's books. So those are books 11 through 15 that I read in 2016. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and if you have what you thought of them and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!